A 1,200 kilogram car travels on this hilly road. The rounded hill has a 30 meter radius of curvature at the top. Let's call it point A. The rounded dip has a 30 meter radius of curvature at the bottom, point B. We're looking for the maximum speed that the car can have at point A without becoming airborne. And for point B, we're looking for the normal force the car exerts on the road. If the car has a speed of 15 meters per second at point B. At point A, direction of acceleration is towards the center because the car is doing circular motion for the segment. And uh, the acceleration goes down towards the center. Let's draw the force diagram of the car. There is a mg of the car that's 12,000 newtons. And uh, the car is touching the road, so there's a normal force going up. When we write the net force equals to ma, the acceleration goes downward. So the downward force is more than the upward force. So the net force is the bigger side minus the smaller side. And that equals to m times the acceleration is v squared over r because it's a circular motion. Because the car is driving at the maximum speed without becoming airborne. That means uh, the car is almost becoming airborne. That means the car is almost going to lose contact with the road. And what do you think that means? If the car is almost going to lose contact to the road, it is almost going to lose the contact force, normal force, which means in this case, the normal force is uh, zero. If that's zero, that means that we can cancel the mass over here. So I'm using 10 for g, and uh, that equals to v squared over the radius, 30. So this will give us the velocity is 17.3 meters per second. And that's the maximum speed without becoming airborne. Since the mass cancels over here, the maximum speed is the same regardless of mass. Therefore, when the car becomes airborne, the driver and everything else in the car also become airborne. Zero normal force also means zero apparent weight. This means the driver is in a weightless situation. Not really weightless, because the real weight mg is still the same. It just feels like weightless. Now, becoming airborne on the road is very dangerous because uh, when the normal force is zero, that means uh, friction, whether it's static or kinetic friction, the mu times normal force will be zero. So the car loses traction completely. This actually happened to a couple of my former students a few years ago. They were driving too fast over a hill and lost traction. Without traction, they had no control of the car. They turned the steering wheel and nothing happened. So they ran into parked cars on the side of the road. They recovered pretty well from the accident, but not before going through some pain and suffering. Well, let's go back to the problem and work on the next part. At point B, the centripetal acceleration goes towards the center, which is uh, upward. And then you draw the force diagram. The forces are mg and the uh, normal force from the road. Since the acceleration goes up, that means the upward force is bigger. So when we write the net force equals to ma, we have normal force minus uh, mg, that will be 12,000, equals to m times the acceleration, which is uh, v squared over r, 15 squared divided by 30. So this will give us a normal force that's uh, 21,000 newtons. Now, 
This is the normal force acting on the car because this is the force diagram of the car. So the normal force is uh, 21,000 newtons upward on the car. And what we want is the normal force on the road by the car. So what do you think the answer should be? These two normal forces, they are equal and opposite action force and reaction force pair. So it, the answer must be 21,000 newtons down on the road. So again, with an upward acceleration, you would feel you are heavier, heavier than the real weight. I hope this problem reminded you of whirling water cup, Tarzan, Ferris wheel, and elevator problems. They're really similar, right?